Modern Money Primer Blog, number 50. Responses. Conclusion. Minsky and the Job Guarantee by L. Randall Ray. As I said, I am not going to provide responses to comments on the final blogs of the primer. In any case, the commentary has denigrated into a chat room utilized largely by aging retirees who do not understand that we've got at least 25 million people in the U.S. who want full-time jobs, but cannot obtain them. The Job Guarantee is a program designed to offer jobs to those who want to work. In our aged retirees are, if our aged retirees are correct, we'll offer the Job Guarantee at and no one will show up to claim the job. I cannot see what all the fuss is about. The bigger problem is that most of this discussion fails to deal with the dynamics of our actual real-world economy. In my view, Hyman Minsky understood these dynamics better than any economist of the second half of the 20th century. He is best known for his work on financial instability, of course, but he wrote almost as much at least in his early years on unemployment and poverty. He formulated the employer of last resort job guarantee proposal that I have described in recent weeks. I thought it might therefore be useful to provide a link to a paper I wrote that summarizes many of his papers on the Employer of Last Resort proposal, and to paste here the outline I use in class for a lecture on Minsky's writings. Take a look at the outline, then go to my paper, then use the reference section of my paper to locate Minsky's actual writings on the topic. This is only for those who are serious about trying to understand the argument that we need jobs to solve the disease of poverty, and that welfare will not be sufficient because of the perverse dynamics created. My paper is titled, Minsky's Approach to Employment Policy in Poverty, Employer of Last Resort, and the War on Poverty. Levy Working Paper, September 2007. Next up, a blog on inflation and efficiency. Minsky's Approach to Employment Policy and Poverty by L. Randall Ray. Section 1. General Approach. Analytical Institutionalism. A. Structure of, econ structure of Economy Affects Performance. EMP, Growth, Inflation. B. Institutions of Real World Affect How Policies Impact Economy. C. Policy change must act through individuals, must change the behavior and through institutions which constrain or empower. D. In a dynamic and complex economy, growth and policy have differential impacts across sectors, leading sectors merely expanding sectors and lagging sectors. Diverse growth across sectors means prices rise before full employment, even in sectors with excess capacity. E. This alters the trade-off, such as Phillips curve, Prices rise without necessarily reducing unemployment, and employment can rise without inducing inflation. F. Financial factors matter, affect market processes, and the efficacy of policy. Need to include how the mix of government debt and private debt implied by policy mix affects private behavior. G. Higher growth, alone, is not an appropriate goal need to consider how it affects allocation and distribution. H. Policy cannot really be general. It has differential allocational, allocation and distributional impacts. Section 2. Redistribution as Solution to Poverty A. Cannot rely on human capital investment. Takes too long. Gestational period equals 18 years or longer. B. Cannot rely on growth. 1. Growth doesn't necessarily reduce poverty. Wage dispersion actually increases 1948 to 66. Hourly wage dispersion fell in the 1960s, but offset by overtime pay in high wage jobs and layoffs in low wage jobs. Geographic and sectoral lagging. 2. Growth actually tends to favor the leading sectors, rewards the better off, 
not much trickles down. 3. Growth is not necessarily sustainable, creates instability, high growth raises expectations, encourages high investment, shifts distribution toward profits, feels explosive growth policy to restrain growth, generates bust. 4. Policy to promote growth usually relies on investment. Four flaws. Financial fragility, inflationary, increases capital's share, increases inequality of wage, favors heavily monopolized, unionized sectors, increases private debts and thus interest payments and rentier income, can fuel stock market boom, promotes consumption of luxuries and emulative consumption. C. Can we use redistribution? 1. Radical income equalization. Redistribute gains from growth toward poor to move large proportion of population close to today's medium income by taking from rich. Arithme ar arithmetically possible, but requires rate of growth of incomes above the mean would fall by 90%, and the cost of redistribution would grow over time. 2. Negative income tax or social dividend basic income guarantee. Has three effects. Incentive effect on labor supply, likely discourage women and others. Inflationary impact through wealth effect. It is like a free insurance policy even if budget is balanced. The benefits exceed the taxes. And inflationary impact through reduction of uncertainty. Lower liquidity preference raises aggregate demand. NIT cannot improve situation of poor because the excess aggregate demand is inflated away. Number three, Baumol's disease constrains share of wealth feasibility. As productivity growth reduces inputs in leading sectors, relatively more are in lagging sectors, but competition tends to equalize wages. If economy achieves balanced growth, ratio of the outputs of the two sectors remains constant then rate of growth of economy falls towards zero. Ever larger portion of resources are in low productivity sector. Four, anti-poverty program must be consistent with underlying behavioral rules of a capitalist economy. Taxpayers don't benefit much from welfare. Section three, the war on poverty. A, conservative rebuttal. Attempt to end poverty by changing people. B. Cannot end poverty, can only give existing poor a better chance. C. Accepts unemployment equals 5% as interim goal on way to 4%. Too slack. Oaken's Law. Every 1% point reduction increase GDP by 3%, 3 percentage points means lowering unemployment to 2.5% would create three to five times the GDP required to raise all above poverty line. D. Must transfer from those who work to those who don't. Policy cannot rely on altruism. Benefits to worker, taxpayer, is small. E. It is an admission that we cannot make the productive process work to provide factor payments to lift people out of poverty. F. It puts the cart before the horse. If the poor change their character, then they won't be poor. G. Creates dependent class, not conducive to social cohesion or democracy. Section 4. Outstanding faults of capitalism and policy to resolve. A. Keynes. Two outstanding faults equals arbitrary and inequitable distribution of income and unemployment. Better econ better economy of performance since World War II has not resolved these. B. Can be resolved only through euthanasia of rentier, plus modest bias of taxes and transfers in favor of poor, plus tight full employment. C. Tight full employment equals over broad range of occupations and industries employers would like to employ more workers than they do. D. Jobs not welfare. Tight full employment helps poor in three ways. 
Some move from unemployment to employment. Eliminates involuntary unemployment. Increases relative wages for the poor. Works to reduce poverty by increasing number of workers per family and by increasing growth of low-end wages relative to high-wage jobs. E. Need for low-wage jobs to have faster wage growth than high-wage jobs. This means at low end, wage growth leads to producti productive growth. At high end, productivity growth leads to wa is greater than wage growth. P will grow in low-wage sectors to in prevent inflation overall requires some kind of constraint on P. W. Wage and high-wage sectors can be justified. Previously low-wage workers subsidize high-wage workers through unemployment. F. Even the poorly designed war on poverty did reduce poverty. It was designed to resolve insufficient effective demand. Bias towards war, toward war gave tax relief to rich, relied on trickle-down. Still, by raising aggregate demand, it did tighten labor markets, reducing poverty. G. Problem. The war on poverty, pump priming, led to inflation and instability, tended to favor oligopolistic industries, unionized workers, public sector workers in labor-intensive bowel mold disease sectors. H. Tight full employment was ultimately constrained by BW, inconsistent with fixed exchange rate cross of gold borne by the poor. I. High government spending and welfare sets floor to aggregate demand, encourages investment, profits, capital share, etc., so is destabilizing. J. Promotes stop-go policy that tends to increase wages in leading sectors. K. Only a jobs program can resolve the problem. Directed demand, not general demand, pump priming. Section 5. Job creation and employer of last resort. A. Need bubble up policy, not trickle down, targeted spending. B. Take workers as they are and provide jobs that fit. C. Provide jobs where workers live, slow down urban migration. D. Employer of last resort wage becomes effective minimum wage, raises the floor, should increase over time faster than high wages to reduce spread, may need to constrain high wage growth. E. Include part-time work, child maintenance, discounted youth wage. F. Would work on projects with readily visible public benefits. G. Probably need a permanent cadre to provide critical services. H. Would partially euthanize rentier. Expansion of these jobs doesn't require private debt, won't require speculative finance, doesn't foster a speculative boom. I. Should set tax to balance budget when employer of last resort employment equals 4.5%. Automatic stabilizing budget. J. Would use progressive tax and distribute benefits of publicly produced goods and services progressively. Taxpayers would get something for their taxes, but program would redistribute. Taxpayers would benefit from parks, safety, clean streets, education, etc. K. Will provide jobs and public services, would provide jobs and public goods and services where most needed, urban ghettos, quell unrest. L. A return to pre-World War II New Deal, which emphasized public employment reduces investment, reduces capital share, reduces financial instability, favors consumption and public investment. M. Won't be inflationary. Maintaining full employment does not have the same inflation impact as moving to full employment. Raising aggregate demand to move to full employment will be inflationary, but it hasn't been shown that holding unemployment low is inflationary especially if full employment maintained through price floor. N. Need to drop gold standard. Within a short time, the U.S. dollar standard will arise 
based on ability of dollar to buy U.S. goods and services. O. Make labor more homogeneous through education and training, but do not make this a requirement for getting a job. P. Jobs for all, available at minimum wage. Government agencies can bid for workers. Q. Will need some programs for those who lose wage who lose high wage jobs and fall into the employer of last resort program. R. Will sti will still need welfare, children's allowance, medical care for all. S. But will solve most poverty problem. Of the poor, thirty percent work part time, forty percent don't work at all. T. Not utopian. Will not solve. Economic problems for all time will need adjustment. Evolution. U. An alternative to the dole. Unemployment compensation just institutionalizes unemployment. Jobs affirm the dignity of labor. V. Other policies. Reduce bigness. Restrain construction wage. Need wage and price controls for things government buys. Utilities, defense, health. W. Must change the system, not the people.